back, everybody. My next guest tonight is a comedian you know from Lady Dynamite, Bojack Horseman, and her comedy special. She's now written a book, Sure I'll Join Your Cult. Please welcome back to The Late Show the incredibly funny Maria Bamford. <laughs> Hi, Maria Bamford. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my on your gosh. Show. I'm so happy to have you back. The people out there don't know, but you and I, I know that you were my last guest on March 12th, 2020, yes. which was our last show before everything shut down. We actually had to send the audience home that night. So it was just you and me in that yes. balcony <laughs> up there. Just jawbone in here. Here it, we are. This was, is, let's go back to that happy time it was right raw. there. Yeah. Yes. And now, I'm so happy to see yes. that you are the author of a New York Times mm -hmm. best-selling what? book. Sure. <laughs> sure, I'll join your cult. Isn't that? That's pretty good. That's fantastic. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Feel good? Feel yes. good? Oh, my gosh. Delighted. How uh, long did it take you to write this? Uh, about four years. Wow. <laughs> um, wow. So, yeah. uh, have, do you, do you, have you ever been in a cult? Uh, I've had been. Well, depends on how you define cult. Um, if it's a group of people, like-minded individuals who have odd practices, then yes. Uh, many, for instance, many, for instance, uh, like for, a... for instance, you have gone to 12-step programs. Oh, sure, uh, sure. Everyone knows how problematic they are, uh, but they are f free, free. Oh, free. Free is That's... the primary, it's my favorite thing about them. Are uh, some cults expensive? Uh, yes, that is the worrisome part. You don't want to get in a cult that costs anything. That's when you're no, uh, you're in for something terrible. Uh, Scientology, that's the, you know, it's pricey. You get what you pay for, Maria. Yeah. <laughs> you get what you pay for. I don't know. I think, you know, I've gone to a lot of, uh, you know, the meetings, and uh, you, I can get a ride on a Harley uh, there, and, you know, there and back from the Hilton Garden Inn, and that's, uh, that's free. That's free. If you're in going to a sure. AA or an NA. Sure. And I know it's a secret society, and I shouldn't say, it's impossible for me not to tell everything about myself. You have been wonderfully, breathtakingly open about your own, own mental health issues. What, what's your advice for people who are seeking mental health, but don't, it's not always available to them? Yeah, there's a lot of memes out there that I think are, you know, very- Memes? Memes. Yeah, yeah, they say like, hey, hey you, ask for help. <laughs> hey, tell someone. You know, and make you feel- so it's like, your fault if you like, didn't. Like an idiot, you know? And and sometimes you can call, uh, you can text suicide hotline, uh, and sometimes there's a 45 to 90 minute wait if during peak surge hours, like the Super Bowl. And uh, so I say lower the bar to accessing mental health care. Call freaking anybody. I called Hertz Rent-A-Car. They can't. <laughs> This woman picked up on the first ring. I told her what was going on. You know, I'm clearly a waste of resources. And she said, all I can do is lease you a car. Before he up on me, she did say, you know what, sweetheart, I do believe every human life has value. You take care. <laughs> Come on! You know, That's a, not spark, nothing. a little spark in the darkness. My favorite place to call, I love the, to call the anti-abortion people because all their literature says life is a gift. Have them take the time to prove it to you. Um, I, sometimes, uh, yeah, I, I'm not pregnant. Uh, my mother was. Uh, and that saucy lady kept it. So 53 years later, what's the plan? I, I would like to be placed in a loving home! <laughs> in, the book, in the book you call your family your first cult. That's my first cult. How, what do you, what do you, I can understand that, but Just, what's your mean? You know, uh, your family has very strong belief that you may not realize how odd they are until you leave your family They have home. their own code words. Yes. They have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I mean, I don't know what your mother's main message to you. My mom, main message to me in life was, oh, God. Oh, honey. Oh, I guess it's all right. <laughs> You know, it, 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 yeah, that and uh, pay people. Pay people well. My mom always thought it was important to pay people oh, okay. uh, very well. Okay. So. Again, you get what you pay for. Right, right. Um, um, what, were fam what were family dinners like growing up? Ours were often like quizzes. My dad would like quiz us, you know, the trivia. Right, the there table. were 11 of you. Oh, there so were 11 of us. Yeah, yeah. Class what, are the three, what are the three layers of a glacier, Maria Bamford? Oh, 
God, no, I don't know. Ice, snow, and neve. <laughs> that's <laughs> You had to know that in my family. That was, that's, you had to know, that was the final question every time. Well, my mom and my sister were kind of the showstoppers. Uh, they had great stories, charisma, they had the it factor. So my dad, uh, my stories, I was younger. I didn't have as many experiences going on. I didn't have a lot of hot material. So he would set, a timer for me at dinner at the dinner table and uh, let me go for three minutes before anyone could interrupt me, which is that's just like sweet. comedy. It's just like oh, so yeah, it's just like a set. Yeah, but that's actually I really love that story. Like mm -mm, keep on going. Yeah. I'll tell you what my mom used to do is that I was terrible at telling stories. I was also the youngest, and I wanted to be like them. And they were all very funny to me. They hung the moon. They were wonderful. But I couldn't keep up with them or even their references or anything. And so I told long, rambling stories full of details that were totally not related to whatever the point or the thrust of the plot of the story was. And their eyes would roll. And I heard my mom in the kitchen. I was about to come through the kitchen door, and I heard my mom saying, you listen to his stories. It's important to him, and he loves you. And to this day, if anyone enjoys one of my stories or appears to be enjoying one of my stories, like you right yes. now, all I can think of is, mom got to him. <laughs> they don't actually like my story. I'm being reminded. Oh, right. I read that you have, I'm being reminded that you have a, a new special called Local Act oh, yeah. coming out December 12th. And I'm being told that I'm in it in yes. some way. Yes, you are. And you brought a clip of yes. what, would you mind if we show this? Of course, oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, I, evidently this has something to do with me, Jim. What's the most baller moment in your career? Okay, somehow more shameful. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Colbert said about eight years back, I was the funniest comedian on earth. Two years later, he said, she's one of my favorites, which is a precipitous drop. <laughs> oh. That's all good, that's all good. Sure, I'll join your cult is available now. Her new stand-up special local act premieres December 12th. Maria Bamford, the funniest person.